St. Gregory Palamas once said that uh, repentance is the beginning, middle, and end of the Christian way of life. And um, when I first read that, I was pretty, I was fascinated by it, I was uh, intimidated by it, daunted by it, um, and, and mystified and sort of confused by it. How could someone, how can you, how can someone really account for all the bad things they've done, all the bad things they do? And I think a lot of Christians probably ask that question. A lot of critics of Christianity probably ask that question. Um, but what uh, one things one of the things I've come to realize uh, over these I've only been a Christian for two years now, so I'm not I'm by no means a theologian or uh, I I'm not even really an authority on orthodoxy or anything, but uh, I'm just a truck driver, but I've noticed in my own life um, that if you don't have a repentant attitude about your life, then the only other option is to be constantly trying to justify your existence to yourself or to others or, you know, other people. But you're going to be in a constant state of trying to do that because we're relational creatures, we're social creatures. Uh, the Christian answer is that you'll never be justifiable, we're never going to live up to the glory of God. So we have a repentant attitude. Lord, I'm sorry for all the, the, the sins that I commit in every day, in every moment, every, you know, we constantly have thoughts coming into our mind that are not of God, they're evil, evil thoughts, and true repentance is um, an ever-increasing understanding of how how deep that sin runs into every thought that we have, and um, if you have true humility and that attitude of contrition in your heart, it's, it naturally begins to bounce off of you, the nasty thoughts that come, um, evil thoughts, lustful thoughts, you know, greedy thoughts, selfish thoughts, desires for, for pleasure and, and fame and all that, the passions, the, what they're called is the, the passions, the, the things of the body which try to constantly rule over us and blind us to the only thing that can truly satisfy us, which is the love of God. And, um, you know, if you, if you don't know God, if you don't have a contrite heart, and you live that life of trying to justify yourself constantly, and you can do a pretty good job of it, you can accomplish great feats, um, you can be very attractive or very rich or very powerful or whatever, you can find all kinds of ways to justify yourself to to yourself and to people around you, but you can never justify yourself to God. So there's no other reason why salvation is a thing of grace. There's no perfect amount of works that we can do or perfect faith that we can have that is some kind of... Uh, quantifiable, um, you know, payment for, for salvation. It is only by God's choosing, by what he sees in us. It is actually, he, God looks at the state of our hearts. Do we have a true heart of honesty, of humility, of love, um, and that comes through repentance. It's, it's a repentant attitude. It's an increasing awareness of how often you're actually, the things that you're doing that you think are admissible are actually little infractions, little uh, um, this isn't just like God meanly Right, making a list of every bad thing we do. It's actually that by doing these bad things, we're actually breaking reality. We're breaking 
the, the way things are supposed to be. We're supposed to be in perfect union with God, just as we were before the fall. Our true nature is to be with God, in union with Him. So, um, although it seems difficult at first to have a, a, a heart of contrition, to be repenting all the time, uh, it, it's important to conceptualize it correctly because it's not, hmm, how do I say, I, I find myself all, all day, if under my breath or something, I'm saying, Lord, forgive me. Every time I say a curse word, I say, Lord, forgive me. Because I lived, I've lived, the first 27 years of my life, I didn't have Christ, and I didn't realize what I was doing, I didn't realize what sin is, um, I wasn't seeing the evil in the things I was doing, which I thought, oh, I'm not bothering anybody else, so it's okay if I do this or that. And um, it's not just other people we're interacting with. We're interacting with forces that are beyond our understanding. And it's dangerous. Sin is dangerous. It's why Christians, when they take hardline stances about certain social issues, doesn't mean they hate the people that are doing those things. It means that they're actually worried for them. Um, but I'm 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 a terrible sinner still. I'm still sinning all the time. Same sins I always committed. You know, like I said, I, first twenty seven years of my life I wasn't a Christian, so I I accrued some pretty nasty habits. And uh, it takes a long time to overcome those things. But the the way you do it is is through repentance. It's and as I was saying earlier, it's not obsessing. As I as I was beginning to say earlier, I got sidetracked a little bit. I was going to say it's you don't obsess about it because I mean that in itself is a sin. It's a sin of um, imprudence or something. To, to be obsessing about anything is not good. But it's a, it's an attitude. It's an attitude of knowing that you are fundamentally a sinner insofar as you're alive in this fallen world and you're a fallen human. We're sinners. And uh, sin lurks around every corner. And it really does. And it's difficult. And yes, all those things are true. Christianity is difficult. Um... But one of the things that I've that's given me some comfort. Well, for, fundamentally, it's comforting to know that that we don't have to justify ourselves to ourselves constantly because that would be exhausting. We don't have to do that. If we have the repentant attitude, the great comfort is that. We rely, that you know that the grace of God is what saves you because you try to stop sinning but you accept that you are a sinner. Um, you take comfort in accepting that you're a sinner. You don't take comfort in sinning. But, uh, those, you know, doesn't mean you get to just keep living the way you were but it's comforting to be able to accept that you do need help from God. And that he'll give you help. And that's where faith comes in. Um, and it is possible to live the true Christian life of repentance. The beginning, the middle, and the end of the day. Uh, you know, all the time thinking of God and his will. And uh, I felt the need to make this video today because I committed a particular sin that is uh, that I find particularly scandalous um, and I, I actually fall into the sin of over or, or maybe thinking too much about sins I've committed and allowing that to bring me to a point of despair despondency and that's that you know you don't do that because then the devil wins twice you know um, but I figured these thoughts were on my mind, and uh, 
if I can make a video about it, then maybe it'll actually do some good, maybe it could help somebody. So, I hope this has been helpful for maybe somebody. Uh, Living a life of repentance is possible. It's it's difficult at first, but with all things, it's it becomes easier. It becomes more natural. You make it a part of your own, of your whole life, and it become it, it is. I mean, being a true Christian is just remembering your true nature. It's reawakening to what we're meant to be when we are in union with God. You know. Uh, praying all the time. Um, I, I can't remember which father said it. There's a certain saint who said uh, something along the lines of the, the, the true Christian becomes a, like a walking, breathing prayer. You become your thoughts because your thoughts are with God. And um, I'm nowhere near that point. I'm not even close. I'm at the miserable, disgusting, pitiful sinner stage trying to undo a lot of bad things that I did over the years and and do some good new things that are positive. Um, so, God bless you. I hope this has been helpful.